This week on IoT Innovations, we're going to recap the latest IoT news while checking in with IEEE on the current state of IoT standards. But first, a few words from our sponsors in Ritsu and Telecom Careers. This episode of IoT Innovation is sponsored by Ann Ritsu. Today's episode is brought to you by Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board, telecomcareers.net. This week has been a busy week for IoT for carriers, vendors, and market analysts. Top stories we're going to talk about include Verizon Orange and another software development toolkit, this time from Imagination Technologies. Verizon opened its network to IoT connected devices using a standard called CAT1 LT, which promises up to limit upload speeds to 10 megabits per second, lower modem cost, and extend battery life. In Europe, Orange seems to be leading the IoT charge. They've had a flurry of announcements over the past couple months. Uh, first, they announced an IoT trial with Ericsson that uses LT, and again, they promised to reduce complex, uh, complexity of deploying IoT while extending battery life. They also announced that they'll be deploying a low-power, long-range LAR network in 17 French urban areas and gradually roll out that network nationally. They expanded their IoT platform called, or data platform called Data Revenue to include additional big data and Internet of Things ser services aimed at businesses. Finally, Orange announced that they had released a software developer toolkit to pro so that developers could prototype LoRa technology-based services. December is prediction time for RCR Wireless. It's also a busy time for analysts. Uh, Markets and Research released two reports about IoT. The first one where they talked about global IT energy market going from $7 billion to $22 billion by 2020. The second report they released was IoT healthcare market uh, was expected to be worth $163 million by, excuse me, $163 billion by 2020. Next, Imagination Technology announced that they were crowdfunding their software development toolkit for IoT. The software development toolkit is called Creator CI40, and they call it the ultimate IoT in a box development toolkit. As of December 2nd, they've had 228 backers and have raised $27,000 through Kickstarter of a $30,000 fundraising target. They say that the complete IoT toolkit includes all the hardware, software, and cloud infrastructure needed to quickly build a wireless IoT system. Next, we're gonna show you an interview with Olin Lognanoff. He is the chair of IEEE P2314 Working Group, which is the IoT internet initiative around IoT. He's also director of special assignments for SD Microelectronics Industrial and Power Conversion Group. Thanks for joining us this week on IoT Innovation. I hope you enjoyed this interview with, with Oleg. This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and this week on IoT Innovation, we're going to be talking with Oleg Logvinov, who is uh, with IEEE and also director with uh, ST. Uh, Oleg, thanks for joining us today. It is my great pleasure. Thank you for having me here. Well, what prompted the call was you had written a blog post recently on IEEE um, uh, p 2 413. And um, I'd really just maybe like to take a step back and, and give us a little background on IEEE, uh, the SA group, and then we can move down into the IEEE 2413. Sure, we'd be happy to. First of all, let's talk about IEEE as a platform. IEEE is a professional organization, the largest one in the world, as you know. And what identifies IEEE is essentially the fact that it has obviously over 400,000 members worldwide. But more interesting is the fact that IEEE combines a plethora of conferences. IEEE has actually more than 1,300 conferences on an annual basis. And number of publications, obviously, is measured in tens of thousands. But more interestingly is the work that we do under the standardization platform, which is a standards association inside of IEEE. So if you look at the full uh, life cycle of any technology, any project, you can see that it starts with technical activities that basically charters the water and look forward and look at what is going to happen in the world of technology years to come. After that, there is a multitude of options, and one of them, of course, is standardization. And the SAE provides a standardization platform, which is now encountering more than 9,000 active standards. So what happened some time ago, we started with the engagement of the industry, 
And IEEE launched IoT initiative about two years ago. I'm part of the steering committee of this initiative. We first saw that IoT wave is coming, and we started engaging industry from 2012 through a series of workshops around the world. We started with the one in Milan, we went to Beijing, we went to the Bay Area in the United States, and many other places around the world. And one of the questions that we posted in front of the industry is, what would it take to take IoT from this clustered, fragmented, and in some cases, in certain paths, to a future which essentially is uh, what we would like to imagine, IoT everywhere, and it becomes a technology indistinguishable from magic, right, according to Arthur C. Clarke. So we will see IoT in every sensor, every device, every appliance in the cloud, talking to us, predicting what we do. So what is needed? And one of the outcomes of this investigation or this engagement of the industry and multiple communities was that we need an architectural framework. We need a reference model that can help us to create this cross-domain interaction because IoT is multi-domain. I don't think anybody would argue that point. And we, as IEEE Standards Association, under the umbrella of our corporate advisory group, started the work towards the creation of this new project, IEEE P 2413, an architectural framework for Internet of Things. Well, uh, I appreciate that background and, um, and a little uh, con uh, context with respect to IEEE. Now, you chair the IEEE P 2413 uh, group, working group, and that fits into uh, the IoT, IEEE IoT initiative. Talk a little bit about the, the different initiatives that you have and how they work with uh, perhaps other parts of IEEE, like the 5G group of, of IEEE, uh, big data, et cetera. As you pointed out, under future directions, which is a technical activities area of IEEE, we have a number of initiatives, and big data is one of them, cloud computing is another, rebooting computing, and I can go probably for quite a, quite a long list of those initiatives. What is the point of those initiatives? Those initiatives create an opportunity for professionals, oh, my apologies, for professionals and technologists from around the world to get together and essentially work on figuring out where this technology will go, what will be the impetus that will drive this technology for, forward, how would we see the knee of this curve of the te technology deployment, what passes it might take. Mm -hmm. Typically, if you look under the any uh, initiative, and I also sit on the new initiative committee of the IEEE, which actually in part funds some of those initiatives, there are some similarities. So. All of those initiatives have a component of education, so it helps people not familiar with the direction to learn about it. It has a component of essentially conference platforms, so it can help bring people together and help them to kind of get on the same page, exchange ideas, and give birth to new ideas. It has a technology component related to standards, so in some cases there is a standardization development that is involved or gets born out of such initiatives, and many others. And of course, in uh, you know, the marketing component, which helps us to educate masses and all of the constituencies involved regarding what this initiative is about, what benefits it can bring, how it can work. So IoT initiative is one of those. Mm -hmm. So how does, um, how does this framework, this IoT framework, fit into the IEEE 802.11 framework? And then as you move up the, the network stack and the application layer, you get to other application frameworks like Google's Weave and, and Brillo, uh, Apple's HomeKit, uh, Intel has IoT, IoT Tivity, I think is their nickname. Uh, all Screen or All Scene is the All awesome. Alliance. And then uh, you've got Huawei that just recently announced an IoT uh, uh, Light iOS. So kind of walk me through the physical layer where IEEE 802.11 starts and where does this uh, framework fit into that hierarchy? It's a very good question. First of all, we need to understand that architectural framework and the reference model, it's kind of an overarching component. If you're familiar with IEEE 2030 standard, that was basically an overarching standard for the smart grid, describing system of the system, the standard of standards, if you will, mm -hmm. helping us to understand how to build this enormously complex, enormously large system. You can look at 2413 kind of from the same angle. It is an overarching umbrella standard that will help us to understand how all of those various components, such as an example, communication technology, it's not only 802, it's 1901 and many others can fit together. 
It is how we can achieve semantic interoperability of the data that is writing on those technology components. From the point of view of the standards that we're talking about, we actually don't care what communication media we're working on. It is not as important. What is important and what we will try to reflect in the architectural framework is how, as an example, energy efficiency fits into the framework of IT. Because, look, uh, we, we can argue how many devices will be out there, 50, 70, 100 billion. I'm sure that everyone will agree it's a tremendous number, right? And if you take even 50 million or 50 billion devices, multiply them by 10 milliwatt, that's a couple of power plants that we need to power all, just all of those devices. So when we transmit data from to those devices or among them, we need to be very much cognizant of the fact that we need to be extremely, extremely uh, conscious of energy we use for specific is a tr transmission. Computational power requirements are going down. We, we can do uh, more and more power efficient devices when it comes to MCUs. We're now going down to 22s and 10 nanometers, but in order to communicate over the air, over the wire, over the cable, we still need a certain amount of power to be injected. And that power is something that we need to be very much cognizant of. So definitely, one of the components that we'll provide in the standard, and we have sub working group in the standard called networking sub working group, mm -hmm. that will pay attention to how to integrate various communication technologies, being cognizant of their power consumption, and potentially even select the most appropriate path for the communication based on energy efficiency requirements. That's a very important element. Got it. And um, there are several IoT, IEEE IoT initiatives underway. You've, uh, your press release or your blog talked about some startup sessions, and uh, there's the Internet Initiative program that you have. Can you talk maybe, let's start with the uh, December program where you have some startup IoT initiatives underway. Um, what do those mean? How do people get involved? And what are the expected outcomes? Well, first of all, those are all components of the same picture because while from architectural framework point of view, we're looking at cross-domain interaction, how to create quadruple trust, privacy, safety, security, and protection, right? We also need to understand that we cannot create something like that without understanding of policies that govern internet in general. And we need to be able to support in our technology. Just take a look at the recent uh, safe harbor issue. How many technological hurdles it will create? Yes, there is a proposal out there on the table that every data piece has to be treated as a, basically a human it originated from. It's a great proposal, but think about technological difficulties or challenges we will run while implementing. So that's why that type of interaction of policy and technology is so important because we need to be able to build policies and technologies that work together, that understand each other's capabilities and implications. So Internet Initiative is almost, I would say, complementary piece to IoT Initiative because inside of the Internet Initiative, we provide a platform for policymakers and technology developers to come together and educate each other and help each other to understand where policies are moving, where technologies are moving, how can we create an interaction that helps them to work together in a much more cohesive manner, the ones that provides with an opportunity to essentially build policies aware of technologies and implementable in the technology without tremendous hurdles. And how do we create technologies that actually anticipate future policies so we don't get ourselves in a situation where something needs to be back tracked and something needs to be redone completely from scratch or with a significant effort. Another component that we need to remember, internet is global. Bits and bytes don't know the boundaries, but we live in a world which is fortunately, unfortunately, still fragmented, sometimes in the country level and sometimes even more so, because if you look even in the United States, the laws that govern, as an example, access to the data available on the ODB connector of the car, I just recently learned New Jersey has its own specific law for that. So <laughs> we, need, we need to be cognizant of the fact that policies are very much local. Information and technology are global. So we're trying to bring those two together so we can help various constituencies and communities work together overcoming those challenges. And of course, now getting back to the startup events. Why startup events? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is actually quite simple. If you think about the innovation, in many cases, we can agree that innovation gets born in the startup community. Those brave entrepreneurs who chart into those waters and go where nobody has gone before, 
Those are the ones that bring us the new direction, new technological advances, new, te new developments, and new inventions. So the reason we got engaged with startup community is because this is a wonderful platform for us to see where technology is moving. Plus, I do believe that such gatherings provide a tremendous value even to established companies and investment communities and academia because bringing those four constituencies together, startups, established companies, investment community, and academia, we can actually help growing collaborations and spawn new activities and even more creativity in the world and overall help IoT market and ecosystem to grow. Got it. Well, this week was, a, I think, a fairly significant week for IoT. Orange had a couple announcements where they're going to partner with Ericsson on some tests. Uh, they also had Orange also announced they, they're supporting Laura. Um, so I guess the question I have for you as it relates to today's discussion is how does uh, P2413 fit into the unlicensed world or the licensed world and some of these uh, different IoT connectivity um, uh, technologies and protocols? Well, as I mentioned before, we are agnostic of the communication channel. We create, we're creating standards that resides above it, but needs to interact with communication medias of various types. So if you look as an example, as a membership of uh, the group today, you will notice that Sigfox is a part of it. Why? Well, imagine the use case. You have a video camera installed somewhere on the side of the building. Does it make sense to transmit video at high resolution all the time from this camera? Probably not. We're probably only interested in meaningful events. As an example, somebody falls on the street or there is an accident or fire or something that requires notification. So think about uh, status of the camera data. Do we need to transmit that at high bandwidth using, as an example, 4G or Wi-Fi? Probably not. A low bandwidth, low power, low rate technology is perfectly suitable for that. But the moment something happens, Notification can be sent both through the low-speed channel and high-speed channel. And obviously, raw imagery can be sent through the high-speed channel. So that type of collaboration of low-power, low-speed technology with higher power and higher-speed technologies is, in my opinion, where IoT is going. And from the point of view of the standard we're defining, this is exactly what we're after. We're after the definition of a framework that lets you intelligently choose which technology is the best choice and the best use for that type of interaction. And by the way, this work has started quite a bit some time ago. If you look at IEEE 1905.1 standard, it kind of paved the road and created a foundation for that type of thinking. This standard was focused on the essentially abstraction layers that resides on the top of Wi-Fi, 802.11, home plug, and uh, Mocha technology as well as the Ethernet. So this layer essentially creates an abstraction, and within this abstraction layer, it makes its own decision which technology is the most suitable for a specific traffic type. So thinking a little bit forward, you can easily see how that becomes a stepping stone towards the integration of communication technology in a larger component, larger picture of IoT. Well, that makes sense. And I think um, certainly what, what's happened with um, 802.11 over the last 15 years, truly it's, a, it's, a, it's seamless when you move from uh, one device to another di device. Things just work very well, but it didn't happen overnight. So I think we're going to see the same thing with IoT in terms of uh, uh, gestation period where uh, devices just work. But going to your point about uh, moving from cellular to um, uh, Wi-Fi or other technologies, it sounds like your group's put the framework together to make that process seamless to the, to the end user. Is that correct? It, it is necessary because as we go into multitude of domains and we use multiple technologies, it is impossible to envision the world where a single communication technology does it all. We have to be cognizant of the fact that the world requires multitude of communication technologies. One of them will perform better indoors, another one outdoors. One of them will perform better in the low distance, uh, low speed. Another one will perform much better in high distance, long distance and high speed. So we need to be able to use a very powerful toolkit of multiple technologies to accomplish what IIT is there to bring for us. Got it. Um Who's the target audience in terms of users of, of this P2413 framework? 
Well, you can see from the makeup of the group that probably most, in, uh, most important uh, participants in this work and probably users of this work will be system integrators and system leaders, people that work everywhere from the device level all the way to the cloud. Of course, this uh, technology will be quite important to service operators because for them it will be very important to understand how to integrate IoT systems into their services. So I can envision the standard being a very useful instrument for anybody from the device level, sensor level, all the way to the cloud, uh, so to speak, big data analytics point of view players. So it's a very, very, very broad target, very broad audience. And of course, I hope academias will, will use it to create new development tracks and new inventions will come from investigations that, as an example, semantic interoperability. Or how do you manage identities of things? How do you, as an example, tag the data as we discussed earlier? All of those components need to be uh, described in the standard. Well, walk me through and let's, let's, let's uh, wrap up today on where you are as a working group in terms of um, uh, creating the standard and, and where do you see the remaining milestones uh, that need to be crossed before it's uh, truly adopted and implemented globally? Well, the group is only 18 months old, and I'm very proud to say that we have established a liaison agreement with Industrial Internet Consortium, which is quite valuable because we need to understand uh, requirements that are coming out from industrial IoT side. We're also working together with one MTM who had spent years working in the space of service providers and creating a lot of very valuable documents. So this group is very much intent to use what has been developed not reinventing the wheel from scratch. That's very important. So where is the group today? As you can imagine, a subject like that is a very complex animal to tackle, and that's why whenever I talk about IIT, I bring an elephant picture into the room, an elephant that is being touched by blindfolded men. And it's, to me, that is the best description possible, because if you think about the multitude of facets that this technology has, it's incredible. So. I would say we have gone successfully through the most difficult exercise, figuring out how to structure the document, how to structure the approach to the work, and now we have laid the foundation for a pretty solid structure of the document, initial set of the domains that we will work, initial focus of the group. What is very interesting in this group, and I think this is a huge novelty in this space, we are figuring out how to describe compliance. And compliance is probably not a great word for that, but for the lack of better words right now in the group, I'll use it. But what we really mean by that is the capability described in the standard for a system to provide self-assessment as a fitness for an application, as a fitness for compliance rules that are applicable for a specific application. To me, this is a very novel piece, very complex at the same time, but hugely valuable to the industry. Because think about what defines IoT? It's a convergence of operational technologies and information technologies. And what we see a lot happening in the IoT space is players from the OT moving into the <laughs> IT side, right? Yeah. That is a very difficult transition. So we hope that with that novel approach in our standard, we will help them to essentially have almost like a tool that provides an ability to compare Apple to Apple when choosing among multiple systems. So as long as the system will be compliant to our standard, it will provide a user with a degree of self-assessment as a fitness for specific compliance with uh, specific regulations, compliance with requirements that are built into the system, and many other things. And while working with IAC, I think we'll have a very good matching point when we have requirements from the industrial IoT side, implementation of architectural frameworks and elements in our standard, and then test beds that will match that on the IAC side. So the industry will see effectively the full tool chain that they need in order to implement something. So what's your best estimate as to when the standard will be fully baked and can be commercialized? I'll be frank with you. I think this work will never end because once we have our first release of the standard, which we hope to have next uh, late fall, 
then there will be a next one because we cannot cover all of the multitude of the domains in the first release. So yeah. the work will continue addressing additional domains and I'm sure that we'll figure out additional elements for data abstraction. I'm sure we'll figure out additional elements for security implementations and so forth and so forth. So I see that as an evolving work that will go forward. But the first step in that direction, the first version of the document, I hope to see basically by the end of the next year. Got it. And uh, we, how will a group like the Wi-Fi Alliance fit in? So I live here in Austin. Uh, Wi-Fi Alliance is here in Austin, but it's a global organization. Will they uh, serve as a commercialization tool or a, a, a certification platform for you? Probably somebody like IAC would be a much better fit for that because Wi-Fi Alliance has its own very specific focus. Okay. So the, the alliance of a type of like IAC or a similar one would be a much better companion for this standard because it focuses essentially above communication technology on overarching framework side. Got it. And then um, how will you work with groups like the World Radio Communications uh, Association, which had some announcements this week about the kind of global harmonization of IoT spectrum and other groups like Etsy and 3GPP? Well, as I said before, we don't specifically work with the communication technologies. We, we interface with them. So okay. I see some interactions with providers of communication technologies. We certainly have a relationship with Etsy that we're trying to develop. Uh, Etsy participated in one of our meetings, and we saw an opportunity to build some very good bridges. We're working together with uh, 1M2M, which essentially is amalgamation of Etsy and other organizations mm -hmm. in that regard. So yes, interactions are there, but please keep in mind, we are not defining communication technologies as a standard. So from, from our point of view, a communication technology is basically a facility that we use. But what we will provide in exchange, essentially boundary interface and requirements for that boundary interface and recommendations as to how any communication technology has to be integrated into a larger framework. Not necessarily from a requirements point of view for communication technology itself, but from the point of view how, as an example, uh, channel has to be chosen versus one versus another. Uh, remember this example with a video camera, surveillance camera, or as an example, how energy efficiency has to be measured and managed from the point of view of overarching framework side. Makes sense. Well, Oleg, uh, uh, I'll give you the final word. What, uh, how'd you, what would you, key message would you like to leave with our readers about uh, the P2413 standard? Well, I will actually broaden this message. First of all, get involved. Get involved with any of the initiatives that are running under the umbrella of IEEE. There is a lot of excitement. There are a lot of very interesting elements that you can find in those initiatives. Uh, go to IEEE.org and just look for new initiatives and you will find a lot of interesting things. IET initiative is under the umbrella of IET.IEEE.org. Uh, you can always find internet initiative that IEEE.org, which will help you to uh, navigate the worlds of policy and technology and get involved with our startups events. The next one will take place on December 2nd in New York City. It will be an evening event geared towards startups, investors, and technology developers. And the next event will take place on December 16th in Milan, Italy. And the next one, January 8th at CES. So plenty of opportunities to get involved. Shoot me an email, go to iot.ieee.org. You will see our announcements there. Great. Oleg, well, thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you. My pleasure. Once again, thank you for having me here. IoT Innovation is a production of RCR TV. To find out more about IoT Innovation and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.